Hello guys. On this episode of Up to Spec with Seth, we're going to be talking about dynamic microphones and condenser microphones, the two of the most common types in the industry. We will be having um, to disclose that both of the microphones have a compressor and a gate on them uh, during like live feed right now. Um, this whole the whole series is recorded unscripted and live. Um, I don't do anything in the post to the sound. Um, so just wanted to make sure that you guys are fully aware of that. I also am trying to compare uh, microphones that are in the same price point or price range. Uh, so that way it's not like comparing, I don't know, like a, like, like a, a industry standard dynamic to a $20 condenser. <laughs> so both of these microphones are around the same price um, and they're for like, you know, bedroom producers, but their design um, is good enough uh, for you to be able to hear these differences um, for team dynamic and team condenser. Um, on top of that as well, I also wanted to help you guys out by sharing uh, some terminology. So whenever I refer to things as bright, you can kind of just think about, um, think about like high range or high pitched voices. And whenever I think of something uh, as dark, or I refer to it as dark, uh, think and relate to a bassy, low-ranged voice. So, dynamic microphones. We'll talk about their weaknesses and their strengths uh, while also talking into a dynamic microphone. And then we'll switch over to condenser uh, right over here, and we'll talk about their uh, rebuttal and uh, talk into their, uh, their rep. So, dynamic microphones. They have a pro that can also be seen as a con, and that is the fact that they're very, um, they're very insensitive. They have a low sensitivity. Because of their low sensitivity, it requires them to have a little bit more gain for them to get the sound um, that you know is being thrown right in front of them. But because of this, they actually don't have a lot of high range attenuation. So, because they're warm and dark. Um, they're typically really, really good to be thrown on a talent or a vocalist that has a bright voice. So if you have a bright voice or if you have a very nasal piercing voice, um, you can throw a dynamic in front of you and you can kind of smoothen out the sound. And also their low sensitivity actually helps with a bunch of uh, noise rejection, uh, specifically noises that we don't want in the recording, such as uh, mic handling noise, boom arm noise if you accidentally hit it um turning or flipping the pages uh for your notes um dropping the cord on your uh, headphones on the table um dynamic microphones do a very very good job at rejecting or um not including or not picking up those noises condensers on the other hand we're going to switch a roo um Condenser microphones are the complete opposite. They're very high sensitivity. They're very uh, exciting and bright. But for some voices, it may not suit them very well. If you have a very bright voice that's also very nasal and piercing, it may sound very annoying on, uh, for your audience to hear. So you can kind of calm it down using the warmth of a dynamic. But then where do condensers sit in all of this? Well, condensers are very, very good for voices that are already warm and already uh, very bassy to begin with. You can add a little bit of that texture, add a little bit of brightness, and you can kind of make the voice pop uh, in, a, in a very interesting way um, thanks to the brightness of a condenser. Condenser microphones are also used in the industry more for music uh, and more for singing. Um, they just have a clarity to them that dynamic microphones can't really reach. The very high-end expensive uh, condensers have very high resolution. They have a very, very beautiful sound and sweetness to them. And again, their detail is impeccable compared to dynamics. So, cool. Um, there's something I'm missing, and that is, uh, oh no, the stuff that we don't want to get recorded, well, condensers are going to be able to pick up on that a little bit more. So if you have very bad microphone technique, uh, you can't handle your S's, and they're very sharp, they'll come through, and that p sound, your plosives get caught more easier on these, and also your 
breaths as well uh, can get caught on a condenser more than it would on a dynamic. And also, microphone handling and uh, tapping the boom arm, the desk. And because I mentioned I have a gate on right now um, to block out the noise in my room, uh, I'll shake my, I'll, I'll rub my hand on my chest very aggressively. You'll hear that it does get caught. And then I'm going to switch over to the dynamic. I'm going to do the same thing. It's a lot more quieter. It's not as, it's not as noticeable if you were to say, uh, have somebody talking and then you do that. The voice is going to come on top and it's going to wash away that, that bright kind of like a sharp sound that comes from rubbing um, your hand on like a mouse pad or on the desk or on your shirt um, compared to a condenser where its focus is on the high range. So cool. The strengths and the weaknesses and then also the AB comparing both of them. At the moment, we switched back to the condenser. Um, can we do anything to these microphones to change the way that they sound? Yes, you can. That's a good question. We were actually exploring that before uh, when we were using windscreens on the Shure SM7B, which again is the same microphone that uh, you have access to at CGSW. Let's switch to this camera scene here. So you'll see that um, the Shure SM7B uh, right now is naked. It doesn't have its windscreen, the thin or the thick. And basically, if you have the thick windscreen or the thin windscreen, it's going to darken the sound. But you can actually brighten the sound by using the thinner windscreen if you were always using the thick one, or you can actually remove it completely and have it open like this, where this is as bright as a Shure SM7B can get. But you can also change it um, at the back panel here, we're going to switch microphones. Uh, we were talking to the condenser. Now we're going to talk into the dynamic. On the Shure SM7B, there's actually two filters um, underneath this little plate. If you unscrew it, uh, one of the filters is flat. And if you bump it up, you're actually going to see it turn from a flat line into a little hump. And basically what this does is it brightens the sound. So you can remove the windscreens on uh, microphones that were designed to use it, and you can actually get a more airy or ethereal or, like I described earlier, bright sound out of these microphones. So you have full control out of them. And the same thing applies for very expensive condenser microphones. They can be given a windscreen um, that will darken the sound a little bit if you think it's too bright. And some very expensive condensers also have filters already built into them that you can change to darken the sound or even brighten the sound more. But there is an additional thing that you guys have to know that um, only applies to condenser microphones. You can see over here, um, I'm talking into uh, the dynamic microphone. That's the reason why this is moving. And you'll notice that there's a phantom power button. This phantom power button is not on for the dynamic microphone. You don't need this. It's typically labeled 48V, or in my case, it says the full thing, 48V or 48 volt phantom power. What phantom power is, is um, it's essentially a continuous stream of energy for condensers. That's all you need to know. So if you're using a condenser microphone, you're going to need phantom power. If you're using a dynamic microphone, you don't need phantom power. Both microphones, whether or not they're low end or high end, um, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. And typically, the more expensive you get, the lower that discrepancy really is. Again, uh, I've kind of alluded to it. Um, the Shure SM7B is the dynamic microphone. Uh, the dynamic broadcasting microphone we have at CGSW. But the condenser microphone of choice that we have at CGSW is the uh, Rode Broadcaster. A lot of the staff at CGSW uh, mainly use this microphone. Uh, you might as well, and uh, it could be due to you just like the sound, and that's what's important. It's the sound that you're after. 
Let's switch microphones real quick for you. So we're gonna now talk into the condenser. So if you like that bright sound, maybe you'll stick with the broadcaster whenever you're doing your voicing or if you're uh, um, narrating or doing whatever at CGSW, uh, you might enjoy the more brighter sound. Or again, you might enjoy the more warm, welcoming sound of a dark microphone like the Shure SM7B or Dynamics. And that's okay. Um, dynamic microphones or condenser microphones, they both seek to do one thing. And that is to capture your voice and represent it in a way that you like. So abuse it. Abuse that fact. Really just go ahead and um, give it a go. Um, test with both microphones if you have the chance to. Um, Try doing a recording with the broadcaster and then try doing a recording with the uh, SM7B and then give a listen and hear which one you like the most. So thanks so much for watching this video. I'll be sure to um, continue the series and add a few more uh, tips and tricks and information that uh, will be helpful for you at CGSW.